Let's introduce the Caddy Area Scheduling Bullet. What is it? Well, it's a block. But contained within that block is all the information that we need to get into our drawings to be able to access information, get that information out. So getting areas from our drawings, including gross areas in metres squared, even in square feet. So if you've got clients that still need it in square feet, fantastic, it will do that automatically. We've got the perimeter. We've got a plot name as well. So it'll actually allow us to tag up those plot names on your drawings too. And we can have two different tables, so we can choose with a build cost incorporated. So we put in a cost per square metre, and Caddy will do the rest, totting up in the table what it would cost to do that at that rate. And in terms of the, the objects that we're going to, to use to do it, we have an AEC polygon here. In fact, we've got two, one hatched, one not. They're just different styles, you can just swap between them. You can change the hatching with the quick hatch tools, choosing any of the presets or line styles or whatever you want, just dragging and dropping onto those uh, and it will uh, change those on your drawing to deliver the style that you want. So let's have a look at a drawing that we can use this on. So here we have a simple little plan. We've got uh, areas on there. So if we go back to our object properties here, you'll see that uh, we have two hatches or three hatches, so they're all different. It doesn't matter what the hatches are as long as they are hatches. Or you can even use polylines to create the AEC polygons from as well. Because if we click on a hatch, what we'll see under the convert to, just above the hatch there, is AEC polygon. So we could click on an AEC polygon, we've got a hatch style there, and we'll see that it only has standard in at the moment. So it will create that standard style. What we're going to do is bring into our drawing those smart styles from this block and of course we can also add these to our catalog and i've done that here simply just click on right click on the the panel there new tool click on the object and it'll add it to your panel which you can then drag and drop in saving you from having to to open up the drawing every time very very quick very easy and it's always there at your disposal uh, for more information on that give us a call or look out for more videos on the catalog specifically anyway Let's go back to our drawing here, so we've got our block, and we can right click, and we can just go to the clipboard, copy to the clipboard, give it an origin, um, go to our areas drawing, right click, and we can just paste it from the clipboard. We don't need to place it down, as long as we've just got it floating there on our cursor, we can then press escape. Because what that allows us to do, and if we do exactly the same as we did previously, which is to right click, and go to convert to, if we go to AEC Polygon, we'll see that we now have additional styles in there. So we have the hatched one with the H in it. And uh, if we go to uh, the top there, then so it's just the one with the cost in it. So we can use either of these. I'm going to go for the one with the H in it. OK to that. Press Regen if necessary. And that gives us our hatched area. So we've now got an AEC Polygon here. So if I go to the object properties, we'll see that under the extended data we have a gross area and edge perimeter but they're in millimeters so we need to change that to our preferred units which are meters and we can do that from the configure so this is not the model space workspace units which we can set to millimeters for our, our drawing here but this is the the AEC units so we configure those so the AEC units and here we've got our main drawing units which are millimeters which is fine, but the area types we want to measure in square meters, and we could also do cubic meters for volumes as well. So having set that, going back to our area there, you'll see that we have the gross area, which is in meters now. Now, of course, we want the property set that we brought across into our drawing with our magic bullet block. So we can pick on that one, and if we tick that one too, you'll see that that appears in the list. We could have removed the other one, we will give it a name, so we'll call this landscape, and we'll give it a build cost of £35 a square metre. We could have some trees and landscaping and so on. We can pick a figure, whatever's appropriate. And then we can continue to do that for the rest of our drawing. 
and having added the properly set definitions to our AEC polygons, what we can do is then set about adding the name tags. So we'll go to draw and the scheduling and insert the general tags there, it's the MV area. And we're using the property rather than the text. So we'll go to the schedule AEC polygon areas because that's the property set to definition we've chosen. And we've incorporated, we'll go for the area name. Obviously you can use other property definitions too. And we'll just pick on the particular area. So it says specify the location to tag now, having indicated the object. So again, we just pick around our drawing and it just adds them in. So we can do all of them in turn. And we can also put these wherever we want. So, just, so I'll just press escape now. Having finished, we can move them around, as you see there. Uh, we can change the color, we can change the size of them, and so on and so forth. And then what remains for us to do is to schedule that information. So we'll just take a, a step back here so we can see the information that we've got. And we can either go to the build tools here and incorporate it from the, the schedule, or it's also available from the top menu, but it's the cost per meter squared one we want, we can choose the, the named area one by preference if we don't want those build costs. Okay, that, drag our rectangle, selection rectangle around the object, and then we'll simply place it on, on our drawing. And if we need to just move it around a little bit, we can do that. If we zoom in on that, we'll see that we have our costs involved, we have the areas, we've got square feet, square meters, and that table has its properties uh, properties of its own too, including one for updating. So we can have it such that it doesn't update, or I'm just going to choose to have it updating automatically. So here, for instance, if I select now the area for the, the first floor plan, and we go to our extended data, we'll see that we've got a build cost in there. If I were to change that to 1350, uh, we'll see that the table updates. So we've got our first floor plan there. And it will will do that for whatever areas we pick. And because it's an AEC table, we can also interrogate that table. So we could go to the schedule table tools and we could zoom to specific areas, specific objects, for instance. And if we pick on, say, the bins area, it'll take us straight there. So a very quick way of getting those areas onto our drawings, getting them labelled up all in the, the one set of tools. And if we want maybe the other style of table without the build costs. Uh, here I'll just copy it, I could just change that as well, but if I just copy that table, now I'll just copy it to here, you'll see that if we change the, the name of the table, so the style of it here, then it will change to the other table, this time without those build costs. So that's the Caddy Area Scheduling Bullet. All we did was take that, right click, copy to the clipboard and then paste it into our drawing. Work for any any drawing and just make sure that you configure your AEC units accordingly. So here we're working in square meters and you've got yourself a very quick way of, of producing those area schedules, which you can also, via the, the right click menu, export to a schedule table too. So you could export it to uh, a text file or a CSV file. So you, here just save it and it will create that CSV file for you which you can put in, into whichever program that supports CSV files that you wish. Discover many more Caddy tutorial videos on the Caddy Software channel on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Twitter for frequent news and updates. And why not download your own evaluation copy and try out Caddy for yourself? And whilst you're evaluating, you can get free help and advice via the live support on the website or through the numbers given on screen.